Blessed good morning to you, brethren. It is always a pleasure to share with you what the Lord has given me. This video is a little different. It is a study, but it is also an explanation. For the Lord impressed upon my heart to speak on this topic. Now before we begin, as usual, we begin with prayer. For without the Holy Spirit of God, nothing is of any value. Blessed Lord Jesus, we thank and praise you for life, health, and strength. You have granted us life this day. So this life we consecrate to you. We place it back in thy hands, O Lord. For nothing and no one can be snatched out of thy hands. For thou and thy Father are one. So Lord, we ask you to mold our lives as the potter molds the clay. We ask you to shape and square us, O Lord, and fit us. That we may be overcomers today. Fill us with thy spirit, for only by thy spirit can we conquer thine enemy. And not only be victorious over those battles without, but also within, against evil temper, against impatience, against rough and harsh words, against evil speaking. Help us to overcome, O Lord, as you have overcame, for this is thy promise and this is our duty. Guide my words now, that nothing be said to bring dishonor nor shame unto thee. Guide thy children who are hearing me, that their eyes, their ears may be open to see, to hear, to understand, to believe. And may they pray, O Lord, and seek thee with the whole heart, for you have promised that if we seek, we shall find. If we knock, it will be opened, and if we ask, it will be given. But that will be given, which is according to thy will, thy way, for our spiritual good and our perfection of character. In thy blessed name, King Jesus, we praise thee, O Father, forever and ever. Amen. The question and the topic is this. Do Seventh-day Adventists hate Catholics? The answer is absolutely not. As a Seventh-day Adventist, I speak for all true Seventh-day Adventists when I emphatically say Seventh-day Adventists do not hate Catholics nor any other person belonging to any other denomination of Christianity. Let me say that again. True Seventh-day Adventists do not hate Catholics nor any other person belonging to any other denomination. I speak for myself now. I personally admire the motive, the motive of those who become nuns for the purpose of dedicating their lives to Christ and his life work. The motive is beautiful. The act, however, is unbiblical. Christ himself did not, nor did he command any to shut themselves away in a close cloister from the people, only to occasionally mix among them. Nor did he sanction the cruel mistreatment of children that they, the nuns, have become known for. The priests, they seek to administer the word of God and to lead others to God. This is commendable. This is actually the most commendable occupation if you will life work or career on earth to lead others to God to administer the word of God this is the best thing anyone can do with their life and it is done in various forms not only in the priesthood but this is commendable however however the method by which Catholic priests do this is not ordained of God either a life of forced celibacy and also shutting themselves away from the people, among many other unbiblical practices, these are not sanctioned and ordained by God. But the motive is beautiful, and would to God everyone on the planet had the motive that leads these people to do what they do. But the question may arise, why then do Seventh-day Adventists seem to have so much to say about Catholicism? Why is that, if they don't hate Catholics? Allow me to answer. The system of Catholicism is a false system of worship. The people within that system are victims of the falsehood. 
The entire system is as far from biblical Christianity as the East is from the West. Now I'm going to pause here for a moment because one may ask, how is it that you can be against the system and not the people? Very simple. It is very simple. I cannot like what someone does. That does not mean I don't like the person. How many of us are our mothers and fathers? Do we like everything our children do? Absolutely not. But does that mean we hate our children? No, it does not. I'm going to read an inspired writing from a book called Great Controversy, written by Ellen White. But Christians of past generations observed the Sunday, supposing that in so doing they were keeping the Bible Sabbath. And there are now true Christians in every church, not accepting the Roman Catholic communion, who honestly believe that Sunday is the Sabbath of divine appointment. God accepts their sincerity of purpose and their integrity before him. I'm going to read that again. God accepts their sincerity of purpose. This is Catholics and those in other Protestant denominations. God accepts their sincerity of purpose and their integrity before him. I'm going to pause there for a moment. Now, if God accepts their, their sincerity and their integrity of purpose, who am I not to? Thus, again, I say, we do not hate Catholics. It is the system that is flawed. Now, continuing. But when Sunday observance shall be enforced by law, and it will be, and the world shall be enlightened concerning the obligation of the true Sabbath, then whoever shall transgress the command of God to obey a precept which has no higher authority than that of Rome will thereby honor popery above God. He is paying homage to Rome and to the power which enforces the institution ordained by Rome. He is worshipping the beast and his image. As men then reject the institution which God has declared to be the sign of his authority, and honor in its stead that which Rome has chosen as the token of her supremacy, they will thereby accept the sign of allegiance to Rome, the mark of the beast. And it is not until the issue is thus plainly set before the people and they are brought to choose between the commandments of God and the commandments of men that those who continue in transgression will receive the mark of the beast. I read another quote from the same book. It is true that there are real Christians in the Roman Catholic community, real Christians, Thousands in that church are serving God according to the best light they have. They are not allowed access to his word, and therefore they do not discern the truth. They have never seen the contrast between a living heart service and a round of mere forms and ceremonies. God looks with pitying tenderness upon these souls, educated as they are in a faith that is delusive, and unsatisfying he will cause rays of light to penetrate the dense darkness that surrounds them he will reveal to them the truth as it is in Jesus and many will yet take their position with his people now again do Seventh-day Adventists hate Catholics absolutely not no God-fearing person will hate a Catholic or anyone else in another church. Guess why? Because God doesn't hate them. And if God is in you, you will do as God. Now, the office of the Pope is unbiblical. It is not mentioned in the Bible. He is not the head of the church, whether visible or invisible. He is not the head of the church. Christ is the head of the church. He is not Christ's vicegerent. Christ needs no vicegerent. He does not hold the place of God in earth. He certainly cannot forgive sins. That belongs only to God and his son. 
He cannot bestow the power to forgive sins. He cannot do it himself. Hence, he cannot give the power to do it. He is not infallible. He is a man. He is human. He can sin and does sin and does sin by stating that he can forgive sin and can bestow the power to forgive sin. Mary is not a co-redemptrix, a co-redeemer. She has absolutely nothing to do with our salvation. We are never to confess sins to a man. We are not to pray to Mary or any other saint. We are never to kiss, bow down, nor pray to statues. The reason for the Seventh-day Adventists' exposure of the papal system is to set free the captives by spreading the truth. These people, Catholics, are indeed held captive to a lie, a false system. And by spreading forth the truth, what did the Lord say? The truth shall set you free. Many Seventh-day Adventists, however, have not allowed the Lord to soften their characters and mold them after His meekness. So they present the truth in an objectionable manner. There are millions of Catholics who are better Christians than Seventh-day Adventists. Why? Simply because they are earnest and they live up to what they know and believe. There are many Catholics who will take many Seventh-day Adventists' place in heaven simply because they are genuine and seek to truly obey God. Now the question may arise, who has given Seventh-day Adventists this job to expose the Catholic system? The answer is God did. God gave us this task. And not only Seventh-day Adventists, but every true, every Bible-believing Christian. This is our duty to expose falsehood, to expose evil, to expose it. These people, Catholics, as well as those in Protestant churches who are being taught error and being kept from the truth, are indeed captives in need of the freeing power of God's truth. A brief history of Christianity will clarify things. See, each reformer, each reformer who went on to form a church was given a truth for their time. Martin Luther was given the truth of justification by faith. Each truth, each, each reformer brought forth a truth and exposed a lie. The truth that Martin Luther was given by God that he brought forward to the people was justification by faith. The lie that was exposed was indulgences. The belief that you can purchase forgiveness from priests and papal prelates. This is a lie. 1 John chapter 1 verse 9. If we confess our sins, he, who is he? Jesus is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And just in case you didn't know, all unrighteousness is sin. The Baptists, the Baptists who form uh, uh, the Baptist Church, of course, they were re- instituting the truth of baptism by immersion the lie that was that was um exposed was this hellfire business this purgatory business because sprinkling infants came about because it was believed and propagated that if an infant dies they will go to hell and there's a thing called purgatory and then then the next level of that is hell this is all a lie Hell in the Bible means the grave. It's a Greek word that means the grave. Sheol in the Hebrew, same thing, the grave. It's not a place burning with fire for thousands and thousands of eons. What kind of an evil 
evil malevolent being would we serve if we lived maybe a hundred years and then for a hundred years of, of 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 sin we are burning and being tortured for ever for billions of years that does that make sense that doesn't even make sense and it's not true okay presbyterians brought back prayer prayer to God and they expose the error of the confessional booth we do not bring our prayer to a human being in a confessional booth Methodists brought about evangelism they went about teaching as the Lord commanded in Matthew 28 go and make disciples of all men baptizing them in the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit okay now, Seventh-day Adventists were giving the three angels' messages found in Revelation chapter 14, beginning at verse 6. Okay? Each truth given reveals a lie. What's the lie that the three angels' message reveals and what's the truth that it instills? The lie it reveals is that God's law is done away with. And this right here is the crux of why the world is the way it is. If you take away the standard of righteousness and everybody does what they think is right, that is why we are where we are. Why do children disobey their parents? Well, if God has no rules, then why should you have rules? What is the truth being instilled? God's law is binding forever. It is the standard of is the standard of character is the transcript of God's character is it is the standard of love okay among other things the investigative judgment health reform okay and the mark of the beast all these truths have been given to the Adventist Church I I implore you to study and find out if it's error you will find you will see that it's error but if it's truth you will error in not seeking it and you cannot afford that error. Again, do Adventists hate Catholics? No, we pity them. We pity Catholics. They do not know their Bibles. They're not familiar with their Bibles at all. They do not know their God. They have been taught to look to a man rather than to look to God. They have been beguiled. I have watched priests and those ordained to give the communion come in to those who are sick and dying, administer the communion, and leave. They never once open a Bible and read to them a scripture of hope or promise. They do not direct them to their Savior and Redeemer. They are left to be swallowed by their thoughts of woe and despair. My heart truly goes out to them so much. They are left to a rosary, to rosary beads, Mary, and a piece of bread, none of which can save or forgive. Many of these people are on their deathbed. Not even a scripture is read to them. They're not taught to memorize a scripture, but they're taught to memorize a prayer which has no meaning. I also pity the Protestants who are left to similar delusions. They are left to their thoughts and feelings, which has become their God. Because they feel excited and elated, oh, it's God. They are being led into sin and to be comfortable in their sins. Once saved, always saved is a lie. From the moment Christ was born to the last few moments on the cross, the devil attacked him in order to get him to sin. See, the truth is the devil never wanted Christ to be crucified. We must remember we must realize something. We must realize something. The devil did not want Christ to be crucified. Because remember, if you remember, Christ himself says in John chapter 5, I lay down my life, no man take it from me. Christ is called the Lamb slain from the foundation of the earth. It was always the plan that Christ was to die. That was God and Christ's plan from eternity, from before mankind was created. That he would be the sacrifice for sin. So, just wanted to give a little bit of clarification there. The devil wanted to stop Christ from going to the cross. From the moment, from the moment Christ came into the earth, he wanted to stop him from going to the cross because it was the cross 
it was the cross that was going to destroy Satan's power. He tried through Herod, didn't work. He tried through priests and Pharisees to get him to sin, didn't work. He even tried through Jesus' own brothers and sisters, through Mary. He even tried through his disciples to stop Christ from going to the cross. Or to get him to sin, to use his power in a way that he was not supposed to. What did he say to him in the wilderness? If thou be the son of God, turn this into bread. If thou be the son of God, cast thyself down. If thou be the son of God. He said, you don't have to do all of this. I will give you the world. I will give you all the world. The devil didn't want Christ to go to the cross. So, just a, just a note there. Now, again, the devil attacked Christ from his birth all the way through to the cross. Okay? So, who are we? Who, do we th who are we to think that we are safe? Every day we must be victorious over bad tempers and attitudes. Every day of Christ's public ministry was a struggle against spies, liars, and those wanting to kill him. Yet he never sinned by displaying evil temper or profane words or even evil thoughts. He was without sin. Not even in thought or word he did not sin. And we must understand that our thoughts also are accountable unto God. Matthew 12, 36. We shall render an account to God for all that we say. And, and Ecclesiastes 12, 13 and 14, God will bring everything, everything, including your thoughts, your words, your desires, into judgment. So this tells us, this tells us, okay, that it is not just the outward act. It's not just the outward act. But it's also what's going on on the inside. Some may ask, getting back on, back on topic, some may ask, well, Seventh-day Adventists, why not talk about other religions? Here's the reason. The other religions do not claim to represent the God of heaven. They are a different ideology completely. I speak of Buddhism, Krishnaism, and all of these other things. They don't claim to represent God. Those, those are pagan professedly they know that they don't accept christ they don't believe christ and they don't they don't claim him islam however claims to be the purer form of christianity and they claim that allah is our god just by another name in their own language to this i will speak and say it is not true i will simply show from their own statements why it's not true they say jesus is a prophet jesus is far more than a prophet if Allah is the is the God of heaven, our God, then Jesus is would still be the Son of God. They do not account Jesus as the Son of God. They account him as a prophet. And there were prophets after Christ. Christ ascended, and none of them stated anything different than he did, than Christ did. Jesus is the Son of God, the Lord of Lords, and King of Kings. So Allah is not our God in their in their uh, uh, language. Allah is a different God. They worship a different God. Now, I understand that many of you may have had a bad encounter with Adventists, which has left a sour taste in your mouth. I understand that some may have been turned off by the misuse of the Spirit of Prophecy writings by Ellen White. And still others may have been turned off because of seeing no difference between other churches and Seventh-day Adventist churches nowadays because of the lack of true preaching. Yet, you are being asked to give up your Saturday. Allow me to reassure you. Seventh day Adventist, Adventism is the biblical truth. Just as you would not write off medicine and go into the doctor because of a few quack doctors. So you should not write off Seventh day Adventism because of one, two or a few bad representatives of the belief. It may be for you to study the faith and show the bad representative what it really looks like. We must all study for ourselves. I am going to read another quote from the inspired writer. In a special sense, Seventh-day Adventists have been set in the world as watchmen and light bearers. To them has been entrusted the last warning for a perishing world, the three angels' messages. On them is shining wonderful light from the word of God. 
They have been given a work of the most solemn import, the proclamation of the first, second, and third angel's message. There is no other work of so great importance. They are to allow nothing else to absorb their attention. He has called them to expose the wickedness of the man of sin, who has made the Sunday law a distinctive power, who has thought to change times and laws and to oppress the people of God, who stand firmly to honor him by keeping the only true Sabbath, the Sabbath creation, as holy unto the Lord. Friends, again, I speak most emphatically, most emphatically, Seventh-day Adventists do not hate Catholics. We do not. I certainly do not. I pity Catholics. And I also pity Protestants who are under false teachers. They are being led astray, led away from the true God, led into believing delusions, led into believing lies, led into believing their feelings and emotions above the Word of God, and eventually completely away from the word of God just a talk a man walking back and forth on the stage talking to you once in a blue moon quoting a scripture completely out of context no true Bible teaching and there are those who do claim to teach the Bible but teach it out of context teach it incorrectly because if the law of God is not the standard of righteousness, not my mind and what I think and what I feel, then your teaching is out of context. Plain and simple. It's out of context. So my friends, I hope this has been enlightening. Be blessed.